Hi, I'm Simon K. Jones, and you're listening to the audio version of my newsletter. A question that I've seen crop up repeatedly over the last 10 years is whether putting your work online is a bad idea for your long-term writing career. The worry, quite reasonably, is that once the work has been released, there's no longer a chance to publish it in other forms, especially through a traditional publisher. Most recently, it popped up in my serial fiction AMA a few weeks back from a couple of writers. This was Morgan Beatty. How do you deal with the fact that some traditional publishers don't want work that has already appeared online, or do you not care about this issue? End quote. So, everything I've seen and heard in the last decade indicates to me that this isn't something to be overly concerned about, although it is a nuanced thing and depends a lot on what precisely you're hoping to do with your writing. Magazines and competitions. There are two areas where you absolutely need to be careful with first published rules. Some competitions are specifically for unpublished work, or will only be interested in work that has been published in a particular form. Most major contests exclude self-published books, for example, which is frustrating, but also entirely understandable. From a purely practical standpoint, competitions have to draw lines somewhere to avoid being entirely overwhelmed, opening the floodgates to self-published projects can rapidly swamp a jury or a long-list reading group. Literary magazines, such as Granta, are very clear about wanting new unpublished work. Here's a quote from their submission guidelines. We only publish original material, i.e. first ever publication. We cannot run a piece that has already appeared on the web or elsewhere in print. We can, however, publish an original translation if the work has previously appeared in another language, but never before in English. End quote. This makes complete sense. For magazines which exist to champion exciting new work, it would diminish the offer if it was all recycled from elsewhere. Particularly in the case of short fiction and non-fiction, it's a reasonable request. Much like if you pick up a copy of Empire magazine or The Guardian, you wouldn't expect half of the material to have already popped up elsewhere. So if you're aiming to submit to a magazine or a contest, check their submission rules early and plan accordingly. Books and traditional publishing. So none of the above applies to longer projects. While editorial decisions will vary from publisher to publisher, and there are undoubtedly some publishers who won't be interested in previously published material, in general the main motivator is whether they think a book can find an audience and sell some copies. There are enough examples of self-published books being picked up by traditional publishers and serialised online work making the transition to traditional print for me to conclude that most doors remain open regardless of how the work has previously appeared. There are the big mega blockbuster examples such as Andy Weir's The Martian and Fifty Shades of Grey by E.L. James. Weir originally published his story in serial form on his blog then put it out as a cheap Kindle ebook. After doing very well indeed, it was picked up by a traditional publisher and re-released, and hit the traditional bestseller lists. Subsequently, it was made into a Ridley Scott movie. Weir did okay, and clearly publishing it on his blog didn't close any doors. In fact, the reason he self-published it in the first place was due to not finding any success with agents in the traditional route. But rather than block him from career options, self-publishing in serial form was the best thing he could have done. E.L. James had a quite strikingly similar path. There are always one-off crazy success stories like that, though. Uh, Like We can't just look at J.K. Rowling's of the world and Stephen King's and compare ourselves to them and expect similar success. They're the exceptions and the outliers. What's more useful is to note the steady stream of authors who have followed a similar path, perhaps not with quite so much fanfare. A.E. Warren self-published before having her Tomorrow's Ancestors trilogy picked up by Del Rey. I remember reading about Taran Matharu, who wrote a daily serial during NaNoWriMo over on Wattpad many years ago, and attracted a massive readership very quickly, which soon led to attention from major publishers. Right here in the newsletter world, the same thing has been happening. Look no further than Valerie castellanos Clark, whose Unruly Figures newsletter has just been turned into a rather gorgeous-looking book. In Valerie's case, the newsletter was the perfect way to create the material, piece by piece, which has now become a book. 
Incidentally, Valerie interviewed me way back in 2022 for her On Rejections series. You can find the link to that over on the newsletter. There are lots of people in her interview archive who have gone on to be big hitters in the newsletter space, so yeah, do have a dig through. More specifically, I was on a panel at the Prima Donna Festival in the UK back in 2019, alongside Lisa Milton from HarperCollins, Helen Thomas from Hachette, and children's writer-illustrator Mandy Stanley. The point of the panel was to provide a cross-section of publishing options for the audience. At the time, I was writing entirely on Wattpad, and was representing that angle for authors. That the festival programmed that panel back in 2019 was and still is fantastic. Even better, there was no judgment or hierarchy from the panellists or the audience, just lots of enthusiasm and mutual interest. The question inevitably came up about whether publishing online or self-publishing spoils your chances of being published traditionally. The answer from both Lisa and Helen was a clear no. If a book was good and fit what the publisher was actually looking for, it didn't matter if the author had previously published it in independent form. But why doesn't it matter? Well, there is a logic to it. So, point by point. A traditionally published book will always find a new and different audience to an online serial or self-published book. These are all different audiences, albeit with some overlap. A lot of people who buy books from a physical bookshop will never read an online serial, for example. That's just how it is. Therefore, there's still a big market to tap. It's not like the self-publishing author will have already saturated the market. If a book has already demonstrated success in indie form, the traditional publisher can look at that as free market research. The author has already proven that there is an audience for the work. With the bigger resources of a major publisher, there should be plenty more customers to find. And the book is already complete. It's likely been proofed and edited and even beta tested by readers on a blog or newsletter or other platform. The publisher knows they're not going to have months of trying to wrangle an awkward writer into finishing their manuscript. The author has already demonstrated their capacity to complete a major project with nothing more than their own motivation. If there's potential for a series or sequels or subsequent books, that's all very encouraging. The publisher can get a good measure of who the writer is before even signing them. If the story already had some success in the indie world, that normally means that the author would have built up a decent online presence. Back in the day, that would have meant social channels like Twitter and Facebook. These days, it might mean a large newsletter list, or a TikTok following, or a YouTube channel. This is all very useful for a traditional publisher. And if a book has had significant success already in an indie context, such as with extreme cases like The Martian, publishers are playing catch-up. Of course, they're going to want to get involved for fear of being left out of the zeitgeist. In other words, why wouldn't a traditional publisher pick up and repackage a book that's had niche indie success and bring it to their own market? It's probably a safer bet than signing a completely new and unproven writer who has yet to be tested in front of an actual readership. Simultaneous publishing. There's an interesting thing happening in publishing at the moment. The Unruly Figures book is one example. The turnaround from newsletter to book has been fairly quick, although it might not feel that way to Valerie, I suppose. The Martian had quite a long kind of tortured journey from manuscript through online serial to self-published to then trad. It's even faster elsewhere. In comics land, Kelly Thompson has been publishing her creator-owned comics on her newsletter, 1979 semi-finalist. The Cull and Black Cloak are both fantastic and can be read by subscribers, but they're also available to buy in traditional print form from Image Comics. These releases have happened very close to each other, and it's really exciting to see. The comics world, at least in the creator-owned space and with the likes of Image, is ahead of the game here, recognising that there are different audiences and taking a very reader-friendly and author-friendly stance. I've not heard of a novel being simultaneously serialised and released, by a major publisher, though with an increasing number of high-profile writers diving into newsletter writing, it's perhaps only a matter of time. What is interesting to see, though, is writers switching between traditional and self-publishing on a per-project basis, depending on the nature of the work and the audience expectations. There's far less stigma associated with self-publishing, and less starry-eyed expectation with trad publishing. Tom Cox has talked about how his newsletter his freedom up to write whatever he wants, in the process discovering that audiences respond 
very positively when authors embrace their inner weirdness. As always, there are exceptions to be found in all cases. The main point to take away from all of my ramblings here is that there are so many options for writers, as I scribble this in 2024. Multiple effective ways to find and communicate with readers. Writing is always exceedingly challenging. Publishing effectively is always difficult, regardless of how you go about it. But finding your tribe and getting your words into the world has never been easier. Okay, thanks for listening. Do head over to the newsletter at simonkjones.substack.com where you can leave comments, subscribe and support my writing.